All right. Uh, hello. Um, thank you, uh, the organizer, for inviting me here. This is my first time in Media Lab. And uh, it's, it's all the first times. It's always a pleasure. And, you know, a lot of surprises come in, seeing uh, different tasks, different problems, uh, the solutions you bring to the problems. And it's always nice to meet new people, new communities. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm Julian. I'm going to present the joint work with uh, Brian and Eric. Uh, this is actually from uh, from August in the East Mid Conference. We presented uh, something like this. And uh, it's been evolving in these uh, last two months. So we're going to be talking about how we solve problems in science uh, in general. So there's some phenomena that we want to study, and we hypothesize <coughs> something about that phenomena, right? So we come up with uh, some models. And how do you know if your model works or not? You run some experiments. And then you compare the results with your model to see if everything matches or not. So you know if your uh, models are working uh, well or not for the particular problem you're trying to solve. Now, in the case of information retrieval, for example, we have different tasks. We come up with different algorithms, models. How do we know if they work or not? We usually get a data set, run some numbers, see if the, the numbers are good or not. And then if they're not good, uh, how to improve those models, how we can uh, keep uh, improving our systems to run an experiment again, see if we improve or not, and then we go through that cycle over and over again. So to some last degree, progress in our field depends on the level of reproducibility, on the data that we have. We need to be able to look at the raw data, the, how the experiments are run, how the processes run, to get to the numbers we get, and to the conclusions we draw from those numbers. So everything depends on the availability of data and process and procedures in general. So how we do it in music information retrieval? Uh, the de facto standard has been to submit your algorithm to MIREX, which is the Music Information Retrieval Evaluation Exchange, which is something that started in 2005, and it's been running every year uh, since then. And uh, it has a lot of participation. It has had a lot of participation. You see that in every given year recently, they have over 300 uh, system runs to evaluate. So that is huge for our community. And so there's lots of participation. It's been great. They've been uh, establishing standard frameworks for evaluation, data sets, uh, tasks, measures, and, and all that. So here you have an example of the um, kind of tasks that we have in MIRIX and the number of uh, runs that they evaluated up to 2013. That's the, uh, the latest I got. And we got a mixture of uh, tasks from <coughs> low-level tasks, uh, more into the signal, to high-level tasks, more into the user. So in general terms, we love MIRIX. Uh, and we are where we are today thanks to Mirex. But as in any relationship based on love, uh, at some point love is not enough and you need to bring something new to the, to the relationship. And that's where the problem comes in music information retrieval. So how does Mirex work? Uh, on one hand, we have uh, us, the researchers, and we build some systems to solve some tasks. And instead of uh, running our systems with some data, we have to submit our systems to Mirex so that they run them uh, in their own computers with their own data. So that is a, something uh, quite different from the usual way in which uh, we run evaluations. So okay, that they got their own machines, their own data sets, and they run our algorithms to get all the data, all the other all results, and they just basically tell us, the yeah, uh, classification accuracy an example of, uh, of your algorithm. You don't have access to the actual data sets. And why we do this? Because in music, you cannot distribute the audio. Uh, we have a lot of copyright issues with music, and if you distribute the data set with music, boy, are you gonna get sued by all these big companies. You cannot distribute music. So this is how we run business. It's what they, they call the algorithm to data uh, business model instead of a data to the algorithm. And this is how we had to run so far, because you cannot distribute audio. But this uh, way of working is facing an, an uphill battle, as it says here, and um, we're gonna see why. So if you look at it the, into the cost of uh, doing business with, uh, with Mirex, there are basically two points which are seeking all the, all the money. It's basically computer time, because they need to have all the computing infrastructure to run everything in their machines. They have computer clusters, or the, they, um, all the storage and everything to run more than 300 system submissions every year. And that means a lot of computer time, resources. And of course, they have to have their own team to run those systems. So you have to think that people develop their systems locally and they have to submit to some environment that is new. We don't know if it works in that environment or not. So there's always you know, trial and error all the time to get the systems to actually work. And once they work, to get all of the results, publish everything and all that. And there is data collection, or actually there isn't in Merix. So all the annual cost of running evaluations in MIR go to computer time and human uh, resources to run the evaluation, which is proportional to the participants. 
right? And we don't get any resources, basically, to producing data. Everything goes to producing evaluation numbers, and that's bad. So the worst thing that can happen to Mirex, and that has happened to Mirex, is actually success. And people going to Mirex to evaluate their systems, that's going to just increase the cost of running evaluation all the time. So the problem uh, we have here is that since we don't have access to the uh, data sets, to the actual music, uh, we don't have that yellow part of the cycle. We can't go from the experiments to improving systems because we don't know what the hell went wrong with our system. If it doesn't work well with uh, some task, with some genre classification, for example, we don't know why, because we don't know which music tracks are being used in that data set. We don't know why it's failing, in which cases it's failing, in which cases it's succeeding. So the problem is that we don't have that feedback to actually improve our systems. And so people are left with one of two uh, options. One is trial and error and try something different for next year and see what happens. So you have to wait a whole year to see the results or go to your private data sets, the ones that you have in your lab, and overfit into those data sets trying to get something good in the medics. So the problem is we get the results from our systems. All right, that's what we want. The system outputs, we barely have them. Uh, almost in, in no task, we have the, the output of the systems. So that means we cannot carry out uh, some evaluation research with, uh, with the outputs of the systems. And almost never we have access to the actual data sets. So, Implicitly, that means that we are biasing our systems and our results. We don't really know if we are doing a good job or not, because we don't know the characteristics sorry, of the data. And we are just either overfitting to private data sets or, by trial and error, overfitting to the mix data sets, which are stale and they don't change over time. So basically, we don't know if we are doing good or bad in music IR. That's my opinion, anyway. Uh, so the current model is unsustainable because it's an efficient uh, distribution of, uh, of resources, there's very limited feedback, and there is an inherent and even more important unchecked bias in the results that we're having every year. So where it's a sustainable model, uh, something like Kaggle. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a huge community for data science, and um, basically what they do is uh, some people propose some new challenge, they got some data out there, so a lot of participants can go there, download the, the training set, uh, run the algorithms, submit the output of the algorithms, and more or less in real time, they are evaluated, and there is a ranking of systems and, and how people is performing in, in each of the different tasks. So um, it's huge. It's over uh, half a million <coughs> users that actively work in Kaggle, and uh, as you see, there are over 3,000 submissions every single day. So that is a huge community that we can learn something from. And in uh, particular, in 2012, this, uh, there was something called the Million Song Dataset Challenge, uh, which was run in, in Kaggle, and they got almost 1,000 submissions for one single challenge in music information retrieval, which is just huge, off the charts. So we want to do something like Kaggle, but in music information retrieval, something like distributing computation, instead of bringing algorithms to the data, bringing the data to the algorithms. Now, of course, this is something that is not new to this community, or in particular, text information retrieval, something like that. You've, you've been bringing data to the algorithms all the time. But this is something new in music information retrieval, because we haven't been able to do that for a long time, because we cannot distribute music again. Um, some cases that we see here in medieval, like emotion, music, uh, camera data tasks, and all that, that's a different case, for instance, in the camera data task, because uh, that's the uh, symbolic music, not the raw audio signal of the, of the uh, of the audio, of the, uh, the music songs. And so, can we really do that now in 2016? And the answer is yes. Um, I don't know if you know Jamendo. It's a web service where there is like uh, half a million songs and the actual audio of the songs of Creative Commons songs. So that means there is half a million songs that we can distribute freely everywhere and we don't have to worry about getting sued because distributed in music. And so that is a huge um, data set that we, can, that we can use. And there's also the uh, Free Music Archive, which has about 90,000 uh, music pieces. So now in 2016, um, in contrary to 2005 when Mirex started, we do have the audio to move around and, uh, and move uh, freely through the participants so that they need um, unrestricted access to the audio so they can compute whatever measures, whatever features you want. You can do whatever you want to, with the actual audio to compute the results for the task. And so that's what we want to get the, to the participants, complete freedom to do whatever you want with the audio. And of course, you are able to do error analysis if you have the actual audio of the songs in which you're not performing good, for instance. So now we are in a place 
but we can actually do it. Um, so the distributed model is sustainable, uh, bring the data to the, to the systems, and that means we have a full feedback for the, for the cycle and an efficient allocation of human effort. So now all the resources are not going into actually running the systems, but into producing data to run those systems. So it's going to be the participants who run the systems. Now, yes, this is not new again for you guys, but it's going to be new for the music information retrieval community. Um, now you may wonder, what about the annotation? Who's going to annotate all these things, right? Okay. So we're going to adopt an incremental evaluation um, approach. So what that means is that we're not going to evaluate everything. We're going to estimate the performance of the, of the systems. So we're going to build some models to estimate the annotations. And the thing is that the more annotations we keep doing, then the better our models get, and the better we estimate the missing annotations, so the better we estimate the performance of the systems. So now instead of saying your algorithm has a classification accuracy of 0.9, we're going to say it has a 0.89 plus minus some degree of error, of error with some degree of, uh, of certainty. And that has to be good enough, um, because now we're going to be able to evaluate on hundreds of thousands of songs. So getting plus minus one, it's not going to be a one of the big problems, I think, for us. Um, we've been studying how to do that uh, for some uh, of the music IR tasks since 2012, you see, for beat tracking, music similarity, chord detection, uh, structure segmentation. Those are different tasks in which we already know how to do this, how to do evaluation at a low cost, estimating annotations and getting performance estimates. Um, They're quite good, actually. So which tracks do we annotate? None at first. Let's get the systems and figure out what should we annotate to get uh, good performance estimates with the least uh, cost in terms of annotation. <coughs> so yeah, we already know how to do this, so let's do it. Why don't we do it now? Uh, because there's, there's no, there, there wasn't any audio collection still to, to try to, to do these things, so we're going to do it for the first time now. So now the evaluation loop as we want to do it is first collect a corpus of music that we can distribute freely, like the Jomendo corpus, and keep it for all the tasks. So all the tasks we run are gonna, are gonna be using this same data set. It's gonna be shared across tasks. Instead of having a small, ta uh, sorry, small corpus for a single task, we're gonna have a huge corpus for all the tasks to share everywhere. Define the tasks and then release the development set. Some annotations have to go in there. So some of the cost has to be at the beginning releasing some annotations for trading. Collect the system outputs, let the people run their systems, collect the outputs, and then annotate whichever examples we need to annotate in order to get to an answer about system performance as soon as possible. Report the scores, and then every year, hopefully, we can retire some of the data set, uh, release some of the annotations we have, and then keep bringing new data every single year if we get the resources for that. Um, so if you see now the red ones, three and five, are the only ones which are actually going to require some human effort in terms of annotation. And contrary to MIRIX, we are going <coughs> to uh, use all our resources into producing data, useful data, and not just into running the numbers. And our plan is also to keep the web and uh, oh, sorry, the, uh, the, uh, the annotation system open all year, 24 by 7, so that any time someone can annotate something new, a uh, research group can collaborate with uh, an amount of annotations. And uh, if we get new annotations, we get better performance scores, and we keep updating scores all the time. Previous uh, systems, new systems get updated with the, uh, with the new scores. And if we get a lot of data, hopefully we'll do, uh, we keep releasing data and getting new annotations. So everything now goes into releasing useful data. <coughs> what are the drawbacks here? First, um, we don't know if people are really running their algorithms or annotating manually. So there is the potential for cheating, actually. And some people say that Creative Commons music is not real music, uh, it's not real enough. Um, we're not going to get into that debate, but anyway, um, we're trying to come up with ways of promoting open science fully, so that if you uh, submit your results from a system which is uh, publicly open, then we're going to promote those kind of submissions, like uh, if you uh, have your system open, you can run for free. If you don't want it to have uh, your system open, then you're going to have to pay something so that we can use that money for annotations. Or you have to collaborate with annotations. So here, submit your system, but you have to annotate these five music tracks, for instance. Something like that. Or you're going to be able to submit five times uh, per month. If you go above that cap, you're going to have to provide some annotations. So everything has to go into providing useful data. And in terms of cheating, what we're trying to do is make it impractical. 
So that really, there's no incentive for cheating. If uh, imagine that we have a million songs for evaluation, what we're going to do is actually evaluate on a hundred thousand songs. And the problem is that you participants don't know which hundred thousand songs we're going to use. So you have to submit your system output for the million songs, and you don't know which ones are going to be evaluated. So really, you don't know where to cheat or, or where not. You don't know where the resources are going to be put on. And it's uh, real music or not, I think it is. Uh, I encourage you people to go to Yamen and listen to music. I, I could do no better than that, for sure. And uh, it really depends on the task. We're going to be talking now about high-level tasks, more uh, into instrument detection, as you'll say now. Some people complain that for low-level tasks, these are not real music. Uh, they're going to have problems, but we'll see. Uh, my plan is to have something that works, and Creative Commons music works for that, <coughs> in my opinion. All right, so, but now, uh, so we created something that is called the Community for Open Sustainable Music Information Research, also called COSMIR. That is our new flashy website that is just out of the oven. Um, it's not complete, as you see. And um, so, yeah, we, after a lot of debate about the name, I'm not going to get into details there, anyway, um, we called uh, COSMIR. And this first year, well, actually, COSMIR is just a fancy name for a bunch of people. Awesome people, we have like 40 different ones uh, from <clears throat> around the globe that committed to making this thing happen. People that said, I want this to be true this year, so we're gonna be working on it. And you see a bunch of people in there. And we're gonna run this first year uh, something that we call Open Mic, the Open Music Instrument Classification Challenge. So you get an idea of what we're trying to do. We have basically two tasks. One is, uh, is gonna be about classification. And it's basically, here's a music uh, piece. Tell us what instruments are being played in there. Like here we have piano, uh, drums, uh, female voice, and guitar, for example. And uh, task two is gonna be retrieval. So here's a corpus of music, here's an instrument. Give me songs in which this instrument is being played. So task one, for example, can be used in recommender systems for semantic annotation. And task two can be, play, uh, can be for instance, uh, for amateur players. <coughs> Uh, I'm, I'm learning how to play guitar and I just want music with a guitar on it to play along with, right? So those are the two tasks we're going to run this year. And we are doing everything from GitHub. I don't know if you're familiar with GitHub. Uh, the good thing about it is that it has this social component on it so that uh, every single thing we're discussing about open mic is going to be in, in GitHub. And you see here discussions about task definition, uh, the taxonomy of instruments, uh, the web annotation, all the formats and all that. So basically everything is being documented in here. Why are we doing things the way we do them? We have all the code, all the annotations are going to be here publicly available with version control so that everything is going to be as open as it can, right? Um, what else? So why instrument classification? Because there's no such task in Murex so far. And it's something that people is interested in. So we're going to run it. It's also a task in which we have a more or less objective ground truth. Either an instrument is in a song or it's not. So we don't really expect too much of a annotator disagreement in there. And it should be fairly easy if you have a certain degree of experience listening to music. You don't need to play some instrument to know that there is a guitar in there or that there is a saxophone in there, right? At least to a high level of, uh, of detail. And of course, a large, well annotated data set for this task is going to be a contribution to the community because we're going to have, again, the raw audio signal so that people can play with it. And that's something really new in Music IR. And so far, we've got about 40 collaborators from different um, institutions, from academic institutions and industry, too. And so, if you want to have a look at it and see what's going on, how you can contribute, there is the website, cosmere.github.io, and you've got all the information in there. Uh, it's under construction again, but you have all the pointers to all the places you, you want to look at. And so right now we're building uh, all the infrastructure that we need, uh, a content management system basically to get all the audio uh, from Jamendo basically, I'm going to talk to you about that, uh, all the audio annotations. Um, and we're going to be using the Google Cloud Platform. Now I didn't get myself into all this, uh, but I believe the phrase was, it's super easy to get Google Cloud Platform to work and you know, kick off. So we're going for Google Cloud Platform. I was actually surprised by the prices. I thought it was going to be too expensive, but it's actually quite cheap. So we shouldn't run into any financial problems at the beginning. We don't have any money, by the way. So um, it's also designed to scale with participants and all that. So 
I think it's a good, um, good platform to try our systems with. And um, also developing the, the annotation tool. We're going to make it uh, a web annotation tool so that anybody can, can use it, uh, participants, crowdsourcing, and all that. And um, basically uh, create the audio, have the, the annotations, uh, and everything's going to be authenticated so that we can attribute the annotations and also play some quality control mechanisms. And um, fortunately, we've been having suggestions from both industry and academy uh, several people saying that they are willing to open source their private annotation tools to contribute to the project. So we're happy about that also. And uh, this is an example from NYU, I think, and this is from Gracenote. Yeah. So again, we have an, a huge support uh, from academia and industry to, to run these things. In terms of data and track definition, uh, from Jamenda we got the green light. So that means they said, okay, get all our corpus and use it for your evaluation, so that's great news. That means we're gonna have like half a million music tracks to, to play with. Again, the actual audio, that's, that's the big news. And in terms of the instrument taxonomy, uh, finally we've gone to about 25 different classes, which I think for now it's enough. And we didn't get into too much detail uh, about the particular type of instrument that is playing. So we're gonna stop, for instance, in saxophone, and that's it. We don't care about the actual type of saxophone you're playing. Uh, so for the time being, we're trying to make it easy, get as much data as we want, and then next year, if everything goes right, then we'll go deeper into the taxonomy to get more detail about the, the instruments. And right now, we're iterating on the definition of the task, measures, and all that. So hopefully, for, uh, by next week, we're going to have everything, uh, everything ready. If you go to the website, you see there's going to be a lot of uh, to-be-determined stuff in there. So um, roadmap. Uh, Hopefully by the, uh, the end of the year, before Christmas, we have the web annotator uh, ready. We get all the audio from Jamendo, and all the back end is going to be ready. So that after uh, Christmas, we can start collecting annotations, building the validation <coughs> machinery so that algorithms can be submitted. Uh, sorry, the, the output of the algorithms can be submitted and evaluated in real time so that we have a ranking of systems in real time. And then hopefully by March, in spring, um, release the development set. <coughs> yeah. And um, by June, hopefully, uh, open the system for submission so that anyone can be uploading their submissions. And um, it's not final yet, but I believe what we're going to do is you can submit as many submissions as you want, as long as you contribute some data. We'll see about that. Uh, it's not final yet. By data, I mean annotations. And so uh, everything, hopefully, will be presented <coughs> in Smith in October, which is going to be in China this year. So if we want to have a trip, uh, go to China. We'll be speaking there. Hopefully, I'll be there. And um, yeah, that's more or less how things are going to go. If you want to get involved or if you want to more, you know, get more information about uh, what we're doing, um, there is the website again. It will be easy to go to the, uh, that other page, which has a uh, some instructions on how to contribute, how you, how you can contribute to the project. And um, what I'd suggest is uh, watch the GitHub repository so that you get updates on everything that is being discussed in there. And if you want to ask questions, we also have a Google Groups uh, set up to, to get all the information in your email if someone wants to discuss something to the broader community. Um, also, every now and then, we submit to the ISMIR list uh, to communicate to the whole community what we're doing. Of course, participate. If you, if you want to participate in the challenge, we'd be glad to have you there. Um, it's coming in the summer of 2017, as I said. And uh, if you want some particular information, or if you want to, uh, to ask something in particular, get some feedback to us, the organizers. Uh, these are the three of us. And um, I think that's it. Uh, we'll be happy to, to have as much feedback as we can. And hopefully this year everything goes well. And if that's the case, uh, for next year, we'll be open to different tasks. So not only instrument classification. And to see how we can merge things with media bar or not, and see how can we provide more feedback one to another uh, to run things better and to make everything more sustainable and open. That's, that's what we're going to do. Good. Thank you. Thank you.